In a previous video, we started the manufacturing process and machined the first operation on a brass snare drum for Dan Palovich. Yeah, that Dan Palovich. So the first operation was just a material prep op where we put this in the SMX and machined the holes and counterbores for these clamping pins. So now let's take a look at how we're gonna fixture this on our DVF-8000T. Now I'm extremely excited to run this machine because it's the one that has the HSK-100 spindle and the Siemens Centimeric control. So I got the drum that we're gonna be making pulled up here in SolidWorks and I've already got it mounted on the fixture that we're gonna to make today. Now the biggest difference with this drum is that the tension casings are integrated into the shell of the drum itself. So it's all one piece where normally these are bolted on. So I'm really excited to see what kind of difference it's gonna make in the sound, this being all one piece. Now, if we look at the silhouette of material around this, that's gonna be representing my stock. And as you can see down here at the bottom, we've only got about a half inch of material from the bottom of the stock to the bottom of the drum. So we don't have a lot to play with. So what we're gonna do is use these Vero S manual clamping system mounted to a subplate that we're gonna make today. So before I put this material in, did you know that 75% of the people watching this video right now are not subscribed? So if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that really helps us out. Oh man, we got titanium chips. You know what's even better than that? We're about to have a bombastic open house on May 2nd and May 3rd. Over a thousand people are gonna come through here. We're gonna have machine demos, crazy technology. We're gonna be teaching you guys some crazy skills, cutting titanium, inking out stainless, all of it. EDM, Swiss machining, regular machining, Hellers, DN, all of it, styles, everything. We got a chef, we got crazy food. Big open house, register for free. We're gonna feed you for free. So register right down in the description, hit that link, register to come to Titans of CNC, the biggest open house, only open house we've ever done, boom. For the fixture itself, we're gonna be needing a 20 inch by 20 inch by one and a half inch thick piece of aluminum to bolt down to this table. For op one, we're gonna take some Mighty Bite fixture clamps. It's gonna go through the T slots and basically edge clamp our part. That way we can come in with an 80 millimeter, 45 degree face mill and face off the entire top. Next, we're gonna come in with a half inch end mill that's gonna mill a counter bore that's just gonna help locate the fixture to the center of the table when we flip it over. All right, I'm gonna stop it right there. So I wanna show you guys an awesome feature on the Siemens Cinemeric control. So all I did in the program is I just hit feed hold or what Siemens calls cycle stop. And when you do that, you get this button on your program screen that says overstore. Now what that is, is like MDI mode. So wouldn't it be really cool if you didn't have to stop your program, meaning like reset your program and be able to run something in MDI? Well, that's what this button does. All we have to do is hit that and you'll see that my MDI screen comes up. Now I can basically do anything I want here. Let's say I wanna move up two inches. Now, remember, I have not reset my program. I just hit feed hold and that's it. So I'm gonna say Z two inches and hit input. All right, now I'm just gonna hit cycle start and I'm raising up two inches. Now it's doing it in a feed mode because that was the active modal code. So now I'm up two inches and let's say I want to move out in Y a little bit. So I'm going to say Y minus 11 inches. All right, so I'm going to hit cycle start. You say, well, how are you going to get back to that position? Do you have to remember how much you've moved or the exact point it was? You don't. That's the beauty of about the Siemens control. It's going to remember all of that for you. So I've moved out, I've moved up. Now I want to go back to my program. All I got to do is hit the overstore button again. Now you see, instead of my program, I'm looking at this reposition line. So that tells me it's gonna go back to the position. Now keep in mind here that this is not gonna work in reverse order. If you moved your axis out of the way, like I did Z and Y, it's not gonna go Y then Z. It's gonna move in a straight line back to its reference point. So you wanna make sure that it's safe to move back to where it's at. All I gotta do is cycle start. It moves right back to its point and then just continues running in the program. So just like your FANUC does. 
That's a joke, guys. Do not try this on a Fanuc machine. This is what separates Siemens from anyone else is little things like this. It's just redefining what you can do with a CNC machine. And last, we're just gonna drill and thread a hole. That way our locating stud is mounted to our fixture. So you may be wondering why I'm indicating this in instead of probing it like I did on the first op and letting the cycle 800 do the axis rotation for me. Well, the reason for that is because we're gonna put some counterboard holes in this to hold this plate down. So my drill that's gonna drill through the material is actually gonna to have to drill into the slots. So in order to not drill into my table, I need to have this piece indicated perfectly with the table because I won't be able to put any C-axis offset in my work offset. So I need it to be at the C home position so all the T-slots line up with the drill. So that's why I'm indicating instead of probing it. Now that we got the part flipped and indicated, we can go ahead and start op two. Now I'm just gonna start out by using the same edge clamps that we used on op one. And the first tool that's gonna to come in is a 25 millimeter Kintip FEG, which is a flat bottom modular insert. This thing is great for stuff like this, which is counterboard holes. Next, we're gonna come in with a go drill and drill all the way through the part. And this is what I was talking about going into the center of our T slots. So we gotta make sure that everything lines up perfectly. Now, after these two tools run, I'm gonna chamfer all the holes, and then we're gonna stop and come in and add all of our bolts and our T-nuts. Now, once we add all the bolts, we can come in and remove all of the edge clamps. Now we're gonna come in and face the top of the material with that same 45 degree facing tool and bring it down to size. That's gonna also ensure that everything's nice and flat, give us a good contacting surface for our Vero S system. Next, we're gonna come in with a half inch end mill and mill a counterbore that's gonna be a slip fit for our Vero S clamping pins. After we mill the counterbore, we're gonna come in with an 8.5 millimeter go drill and drill the minor diameter for all the threaded holes. Next, we're gonna come in and chamfer everything and then thread mill with an M10 by 1.5 thread mill. So that's gonna be it for Op2. It's a very simple fixture. So let's go over here and take a look at the Vero S manual clamping system in a little bit more detail. So we just got the machining done on our fixture and it's looking pretty good considering that my tools were hanging out a country mile. Now that fixture is just so we can mount these here, which are our Shunk Vero S manual clamping system. That's a mouthful. Now, if you haven't seen this before, let me show you how this works. These come in different forms and the basic module is looks very similar to this, except it has a base on the bottom of it. These are made as basically like extensions. So they're gonna be made to go on top of the basic module. These extensions are incredibly solid and heavy, but it's great because you need that density when you're elevating your parts up off the table. So it keeps everything rigid. So it's a good thing they have a lot of weight to them. As you can see, it's a double clamping module, so you can put a clamping pin on the bottom and the top. And we're gonna take this clamping pin, bolt directly to the fixture itself, then we can take this piece, go right down on top of our clamping pin, and tighten the bolt. So we'll do the same thing to the top, but the clamping pin on the top side is gonna be mounted directly to our drum itself. So that's how this Vero S system works. Now we're gonna take these clamping pins and get them mounted to our fixture.
now we got our material loaded in. Let's see how solid it is. Yeah, we're getting a nice thud on there and not a ringing. So we know this thing's held in there by this manual clamping system really nice and tight. So all of that density in these is transferring into our part, which is keeping it solid and rigid, which is going to be good because this thing has some extremely thin walls. So we really need a rigid setup. Now we're getting some rigidity from the material itself. Brass is very dense, so that's gonna help us out as well. But this shunk system is incredibly nice, and I think this is gonna work really well. All right, so now we're all set up and ready to start machining on an insane snare drum. Unfortunately, we're gonna to have to wait until after the Boombastic event that Titan already mentioned. So if you want more info on that, check out the link in the description below. But we're gonna get this thing made pretty soon. And who knows, maybe we can even get Dan to fly out here and test this thing out when we get it made. Maybe I can even show them a thing or two. You know, I've been taking lessons for about two weeks now and I'm getting pretty good. So guys, that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. And if you missed the first stop on this video, then click over here somewhere. It's gonna be popped up on your screen. And stay tuned, cause you're not gonna wanna miss the next video.